Hey everybody, Aaron Count, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about ready positions with the rifle. Like I talked about recently with a video on handguns, handgun ready positions. Uh, ready positions are very vague and there's a lot of nuance involved in what ready positions are and aren't. And then of course the disambiguation between a ready position and a movement position, because they're not always the same thing. One can be one, one can't necessarily be the other, or shouldn't be the other because of efficiency. If you remember that video, you remember I said the ready position doesn't matter as long as it's efficient and the rifle is no different. But the rifle has its own set of concerns because of the nature of the rifle versus the nature of the handgun. I'll say it again for the kids in the back. Again, uh, the ready position does not matter as long as it's efficient. Now part of efficiency is going to be safety, which is what we're going to get into. First thing we got to talk about is what makes the rifle fundamentally different from the handgun when it comes to safety, when it comes to ready positions. Uh, the biggest, I think, uh, most um, stark difference would be the fact that the rifle is uh, not a pistol, uh, in fact, even though some rifles are pistols. Anyway, so I've got a stock. That's one point of contact. I've got my primary hand, control hand, if you will. Uh, that's the second point of contact. Then I have my support hand or my secondary control hand, if you've got gadgets and buttons and gizmos. Uh, that's my third point of contact. And then I have a cheek weld when I'm actually aiming the gun, which is my fourth point of contact. Now I have four points of contact versus two or one points of contact uh, on the handgun. Now on a rifle, can I shoot it without my, my primary hand? Yes. Can I shoot it without my cheek weld? Yeah, aiming's going to be a little difficult, but yeah, you can theoretically get work done. Can I shoot it without a stock weld? Again, now we're getting into the area of this is really, really shitty and I should probably be using a handgun. So you can shoot the rifle with less points of contact. I want to make sure I make that clear. However, those are unorthodox or emergency or exigent techniques that we're not necessarily going to cover in this video. I bring up the four points of contact because they somewhat dramatically change the ability to maneuver the rifle in ready and movement positions versus what you're able to do with a handgun. First things first with the rifle, if it has a sling, we've got to talk about sling management. I've done a video specifically on this topic before. Uh, but I'll kind of cover the, uh, the the gist of that video. If my hands are on the rifle and I have a reasonable expectation of using it, I'm going to run my sling slack all the way out so I have all the maneuverability I might need. And if I've got a necklace out of the sling, I can do that very easily. The reason I run all my slack out is because I'm controlling the gun. And if I need to bump over to another shoulder or if I need to make a full transition, it's much easier and I don't have to stop along the way to manage sling length. If my hands are coming off of the rifle, if I'm doing an administrative task or whatever, I'm gonna go ahead and run that slack all the way in, and I'm gonna roll the rifle outboard. I roll the rifle outboard because of the safety. I don't like ambi safeties. I've never really seen a reason for them. I can shoot just as fast left-handed with a right-handed safety as I can with a left-handed safety. It's not really an issue, it's a technique thing. It's a little bit more cumbersome, marginally slow, so matter of degrees, but it's just the way I like to do things. The reason I do it is so I can outboard my safety and I don't have to worry about my safety brushing against my gear and flipping the gun to fire. Now you should always be checking your kit, but in the moment, in the moment. So that's something I like to do. So when I'm going hands off and I don't have muzzling concerns in my rifle in that case, such as standing over students or something like that when they're laying prone shooting, this is my general administrative rifle carry position. Now another thing I can do is actually roll the rifle to my back. Come muzzle up, boom, and with a tight sling, I don't have to worry about my muzzle bouncing around as I walk and talk and do my thing and muzzle people on the line. So those are kind of administrative sling carry positions for the rifle. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the ready positions. You're probably familiar with high ready, low ready. Uh, they mean different things to different people based on different experiences, uh, different teachings, and, and uh, how they apply their common sense to what they're actually uh, teaching. High readying a rifle, a little bit, little bit different than a handgun, but the same principles apply. If this is my sight picture, then my high ready is going to clear the sight out of my vision. I may be looking just over the top of it, but I'm gonna get out of my sights or off my dot, and I'm gonna look over the top of the gun to open up my vision. Again, this is more of an issue for iron sights, even with a rifle. If we have that front sight focus, we're not seeing in clarity, in focus, what we're actually aiming at, unless it's super, super close. And even then, one focal plane at a time is how the human eye wants to do things. So that high ready position is a way to get people to get out of their sight picture, get off their hard focus, and see the world a little bit better so they can see that fine detail that they may need to see in order to uh, 
uh, decide if they're going to shoot or not, judgment type situation. So high ready position is just that, get out of your sights but keep the gun in an envelope ready to fire. So if I'm here and I come down just a little bit to get out of my optic, I can still immediately snap back to my dot and fire or understand where my new alternate point of aim would be based on distance to the target and if I don't feel like I have time I can shoot there then correct get my optic shoot again. So that's kind of the high ready position. There's not a lot of magic to it. With the rifle, I don't have the ability necessarily to compress the gun or do anything like that if I want to keep the gun at gunpoint, uh, such as issuing verbal commands um, or having some kind of other pointed conversation. High ready is generally agreed upon. Uh, you don't see a lot of people with an alternate definition or, or extreme technique of what high ready is for them. There's a few weird things out there, but for the most part, uh, everybody's doing high ready more or less the same way. Low ready is a little bit more vague, a little bit more nuance involved in low ready because uh, how low is low? Uh, if this is high ready, is this low ready? I would consider this to be low ready because now the gun is completely depressed out of my visual horizon. I got a little bit of it in my lower peripheral. I can see just a little bit of the gun there. But if, some, if I was holding someone at gunpoint issuing verbal commands, I could see their feet to their head as long as they were at least three yards away from me. So I get to see the whole package, which is what I want especially if I'm worried that they might have a weapon or something like that, based on the situation. Low ready is also used as a movement position. So guys will come depressed off the gun and they'll creep around in the house or work through the hallways or do whatever it is that they're doing. And when they get ready to prep into a room, based on their um, doctrine, they may come up on the gun just as they enter the doorway, they may come up on the gun as they enter the doorway, or they may come up on the gun after they've entered the doorway. There's a lot of differences there. And again, totally different topic we're getting into uh, CQB, uh, the catch-all CQB phrase there for, for talking about that. In a home defense situation, low ready is a good, I'm going to go check out that noise. Unless you have small kids, or unless you're worried about there being adults below that horizontal uh, area where you're normally going to point your gun and you're dealing with an actual threat who's standing up doing his thing. Um, Especially for those of you who have small children or dogs. I mean, that's a concern of mine. I have dogs. I don't want to ND into my dog. I don't want to ND at all. But if I'm going to ND, I definitely don't want to ND into my dog. If I have to go search my house for whatever reason, low ready might not necessarily be the position I use based on the context of the situation. And this is where we get into uh, ready position versus movement position. If I'm not comfortable with low ready because I have killed children and I don't want to muzzle my kids as I come around corners because the situation... Uh, or in a law enforcement setting, if I'm responding to a, an active killer, call it a school, and it's a school where children are shorter than adults. Uh, also, not something I necessarily want to do. I don't want this to be my default position, the one that I just mindlessly use no matter what when I'm not at a high ready or on my sights. Uh, so an alternate to that, just like the handgun, is going to be to go muzzle up. Now, there are some people that don't like coming out of the sling. They don't like, they want you to do your muzzle up, but they want you to stay in their sling. And I'm like, why? Uh, what purpose does the sling serve when I have all my controlling digits on the gun? What does the sling actually do? I'm not using it, I'm not doing a sling wrap for precision shooting or anything like that. The sling is literally an accoutrement at that point. It is an accessory which is nice and I like it and it's fun and I'm glad it's there if I need it in the future, but in the moment it doesn't serve its purpose. So if I need to go muzzle up, and like I said, we're talking about if down isn't a safe direction, and I need to go to a high port or a muzzle up position with the rifle, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for maneuverability's sake to stay in that sling. I'm gonna necklace out of it. And you know, the cool thing about the necklace is I can still, if I have to, retain the rifle if I need both of my hands. So in this position, I'm able to get the rifle muzzle up. And this is where we get to our next point of contention. You have to bear with me on this one because this aggravates me because it, it, it just shows a lack of common sense on the critics part. People don't want you to keep your, your rifle in front of your face. Now, there's, there's plenty of reasons why you wouldn't necessarily want to keep your rifle in front of your face, but one of them isn't it's going to block your view to the threat. Um, if the guy is super tiny, like he's just a small person, like he's this big, or if he's this big because he's super far away, then holding my rifle, blocking one of my eyes, may keep me from seeing him. You kind of get what I'm saying? If he's human-sized and he's close, three, five, ten, seven, whatever, yards, I'll be able to see him even though there's a rifle in my peripheral vision. And if there's a guy standing there, and I'm holding my rifle like this, and he might be a guy that I should point this at, 
I'm gonna stop doing this and I'm gonna start doing this. You kind of see my point there? Um, it's just like reloads on a handgun and even reloads of the rifle. There's some people, there's a school of thought that you shouldn't put your gun in front of your face. Why? Uh, well, you might block the view to his hands. Okay, well, we'll go with that. If he's close and I can see him, but the rifle's blocking my view of his hands, it goes back to my first point. If he's someone I need to point a rifle at, then I'm going to point a rifle at him and I'm going to go maybe do a high ready if I'm worried about his hands or maybe do a sight picture depending on distance. Again, can't predict the future. But what I can say is you're, you're kind of, when you tell people that they can't have their rifle in their peripheral vision, what you're telling them is you're a fucking idiot and I don't expect you to do the right thing when it's time to point your gun at bad guys. You'll forget to point it at them, the gun will block your view to the bad guy and then bad things will happen to you. Doesn't really pass the common sense test when we think about it. Now, I'm going to do everything I can to keep my rifle from blocking my view, such as like this. I mean, I don't want a whole lot of that. But if the rifle is right here, and one-handed, kind of an administrative position, or if I'm going to a high port and I'm actually locking it in underneath that arm, I don't really see a big deal. Some people bring it over here and they bring their hand over here, and that's fine. It, it's still blocking my, my vision, though, because if I need to turn my head to some kind of stimulus in that direction, the gun's still in my way. Granted, it's not blocking my direction of travel, but no matter where I put the rifle in a high port or a high ready, I'm going to have that concern of it's blocking peripheral vision. If I'm looking this way and keeping my rifle here so it doesn't block my looking this way, and the threat appears from over there, am I going to completely miss him? That's a concern you got to think about, but you also have to consider the, the the fact of the situation that you're in. If I'm worried about the guys that are three, four hundred meters away, then the rifle may actually block my view of them completely. If the guy's inside a building that is a maximum of two thousand square feet, and then there's all these angles and hallways and rooms and things, I don't believe that this is necessarily going to be able to block my ability from at least detecting him turning. Okay, that's a guy that needs a gun pointed at him. That's kind of my point. If you're going to use a high ready, or a high, or I wouldn't say high ready, if you're going to use a high port or a muzzle up, you have to accept the fact that the rifle is probably going to block a little bit of your vision at some point. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, hopefully, and I'm sure there's already some people in the comments talking about their opinion, and that's fine. I want to hear. Um, this is just like muzzle up with a pistol. Uh, it's not a ready position. To me, it's more of a moving position. Now, high port can be a ready position uh, based on the context. If I'm working with a stack, if I'm working with multiple shooters, uh, and I'm not the first guy going through the door, uh, just me, my, per my preference, uh, and the way that, that I've predominantly been taught, uh, high port's the way to go. Um, there's a huge argument that there always will be high port versus muzzle down. Again, to me, this does not prevent me from getting the gun into action in, in compressed environments. Versus if I muzzle down and I'm in a stack and I need to bring my gun up, I have to worry about muzzling my teammates and I have to maybe work around their gear uh, and, of course, them in order to get the gun uh, into service. So I pretty much default to a muzzle up position uh, as a movement and kind of a ready position. Now, some people use this as an actual ready position, so they'll be snapping, snapping into the gun and that's how they work versus coming from a high ready or from a muzzle down low ready and that's fine too because again the rifle's a little bit harder to maneuver uh, than the pistol is so your options are i wouldn't say less but they are different and for those of you that use a rifle occupationally uh, the rifle is going to be the most effective weapon you have if your other weapon is a handgun uh, totally get that but it may not necessarily be the weapon you want to use for the situation based on the context uh, if I have maneuverability, then the rifle is going to be my go-to gun. But if I'm moving into a small space, I may forego the use of the rifle in order to gain the mobility of the handgun. And that's something that you should definitely be considering uh, when you start thinking about, okay, what's, you know, maybe, maybe more for law enforcement, but military definitely applies as well. If I know the terrain I'm going to be working in, if I know I'm about to go into a school or a gas station or a bank, are there rooms inside that building that are going to make the rifle more cumbersome than useful? And the answer is probably going to be yes, because there are small rooms, they do exist, and they usually exist at least once or twice per building. So if I have to go into what I know is a small bathroom, a public access bathroom, say in a, in a bank or a school uh, or a shopping center, and I have to search and clear that bathroom, um, if I have to do it by myself, exigent circumstances, I'm probably going to depress to that, or I'm probably going to transition to that handgun in order to, to maneuver that smaller environment. Go ahead and, you know, basically lash the rifle down like I talked about. I wouldn't necessarily go to a rear cover, but I would bring it in, make sure I'm back in it, roll it out, 
handgun's out, I can do my maneuvering, I can work around, and then I can go back, put my handgun away, bring my rifle back up. If I'm working as part of a team, I may still have long cover with a rifle while I work with my handgun. And again, that gets into very, very specific techniques for specific situations, not really the topic of the video. But it's something that you should definitely consider if you do find yourself regularly carrying a rifle and a pistol. Because sometimes the most efficient muzzle position with a rifle is slung. This is a topic that, in handgun and with a rifle, uh, that can be what if People can add, people can give me a scenario. Well, what would you do in this scenario? And I'll have an answer. And then I can change one fact of the scenario and then I wouldn't do that. Uh, it goes back, same with a handgun. Um, known safe direction. That's where I want to point my muzzle. If I have a bad guy, safest direction to point my gun at the bad guy. Uh, if I have an unknown threat, potentially a threat, in that moment until I determine if they're a threat or not, the safest direction to point my gun is at that person. Uh, and that gets into training and verbal commands and I you know with handgun it's a little bit more of a concern guys tend to talk with their hands so they'll hold someone at gunpoint and they'll they'll bring their support hand off the gun for some reason and they'll start doing this and I've seen guys do it with rifles too uh, a little bit less but I've definitely seen where a guy will have a dude you know high, he'll be at a high ready and he'll take his hand off and he'll be like that and that may make sense if you're worried about them not speaking English most people are gonna understand okay get down or speak in whatever language you speak uh, of course, if you're listening to this, you probably speak English, or at least if you're understanding me. Uh, it's still a concern. Um, some guys do the barrel wag. I don't think that translates as well. Uh, if there's a language issue, then you're definitely going to have to come up with some kind of pantomiming action that you can to get someone's attention or to get them to understand what you're trying to get them to do. But we want to kind of keep that to a minimum. The safety concern isn't as great with the rifle. It's really hard to get your hand out in front of the muzzle on most guns, most guns. Uh, but it's still a concern that, that it's there and it's something that we need to be aware of because we want to, as much as possible, minimize talking with our hands. Handgun, again, bigger a concern. With the rifle, it's still an issue because I'm losing support on the gun while I do this. And I always come back to the same point. If I use the words and not the hand motions and he speaks English, he's going to get the point and he's going to comply or he's not. If I only use the hand motions but not the words, he may not understand exactly what I'm trying to get him to do. So words are going to take precedent unless, again, I feel like there's some kind of language barrier. And if you're in an occupation where you deal with people who speak a foreign language or uh, the situation presents itself, it would behoove you to at least know the basic commands of how to tell people in Spanish or whatever language, um, Korean, Farsi, Afrikaans, whatever, to get down uh, and stay down and listen up or get shot. I know there's other ready positions and other muzzle positions and other techniques and other things you've seen out there, but I just wanted to talk about the basics. Don't get married to the idea that the gun has to be in one of these textbook, quote unquote, positions. Uh, the muzzle can be pointed in a direction for the amount of time that it's safe. Uh, if that direction changes, or if that situation changes, then the muzzle direction also needs to change. So high ready may be safe with a threat, but it may change dramatically if you start interacting with and encountering uh, people who you know for certain should not have guns pointed at them. And then of course there's, you know, you shouldn't point your muzzle up if you're in a two-story building. Totally get that. However, drywall uh, is a thing and, and there's rooms on that horizontal plane, so if you're pointing your gun at what looks like an empty corner, what's on the other side of that wall? We are already using this concept because it's the safest way to function. We take known over unknown. And it's no different when it comes to muzzle direction pointed up. If I know I can't point my gun in the horizontal, I'm gonna go up, if that makes sense. I may go down, if that makes sense. Um, and we use that same principle as applied to single story dwellings and even out in the public. If I know I can't point my gun this way, then I have to go with the known safe direction, which may be up, may be down, may be slightly off to the right, slightly off to the left, decompressed, high compressed, whatever. Uh, there's gonna be a direction that I can point the gun in as a known safe direction. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I'm Eric Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.